Hello America, this is your president. I am a fan of 4 Collector channel and glad to see you all fine citizens supporting him. Do check out this video and drop a big like and an even bigger comment so we can make 4 Collector great again. Enjoy. Hello guys, welcome to 4K channel. Today I'm going to share with you some cool not gelds and also hyperinflation money from post World War I Germany. We're talking 1920s. So the World War I had ended, Germany lost, France and all the allies imposed huge fines on German state uh, which led to basically decline of Weimar Republic economy leading to massive hyperinflation and uh, need for emergency money or not gelds. So here we have a complete set of four not gelds issued from this old town in northern Germany by the name of Itzeho. Uh, this is basically in the state of Schleswig and Holstein and this is also the capital of district Steinberg. Um, these knot gelds are really cool because they are designed by a famous German uh, expressionist painter and graphic designer by the name of Wenzel Hablick. Uh, he was born in 1881. He lived until 1934. He was actually bar born in Bohemia, uh, but later settled in this small town called Itziho, Germany, in 1907. So he actually designed uh, these knot gels. So let's take a quick peek at these. They have this really cool art deco design. So this is the smallest denomination here. This one is 25. Fennig, and I really like uh, how the lettering, the knot geld, is right across the face. Now, all of these were issued with some hidden meaning, and uh, basically for this complete set, um, the theme was necessity knows no law or boundary. Necessity knows no law or boundary. So it's basically symbolizing social and economic crisis uh, that Germany and German people were facing after World War I. So at first glance, there's a lot of writing, but if you look closely, it actually gives you the, the comparative prices of goods uh, as compared to 1913 to 1921. So it's basically uh, making you aware of hyperinflation in 1920s Germany after the World War I. So, you know, it has listed butter and other necessities and the prices. Now, here's the back of the note. And the back of the note is really cool. You can see these you know, the desperation, basically the, the hands trying to reach out of the water and they're trying to grasp this grain, the wheat grain, which is, which is kind of seems out of reach. And then you have all these fish, which are basically symbolizing chaos. So that's the 25 fennec. Next up, we have the, the next denomination is the 50, 50 Fennig. And here again, we're comparing prices of goods from 1913 to 1921. And this one on the back has the 
a map or a like a topographic map of the city of Itzeho. So you can see a little river running by, roads and all these, you know, living quarters in brown. So uh, we can see the, the value 50 kind of sinking and the fennec sinking in the water, kind of symbolizing how, you know, the hyperinflation is catching up and kind of surrounding the city. Next one is the 75 fennig. You can see the 75 in the background. I uh, really love this Art Deco design and uh, the serial numbers. They all have a serial number. Now let's take a look at the back. This one is really interesting. It has a hen laying an egg and then all these little chicks, you know, yapping. So basically, you know, one hen and too many mouths to feed is the theme here. Uh, the next one and the last one in this series, which is super interesting. Again, they all have very artistic design. This one kind of like a CD or a record player, you know, semicircular design here. Uh, this one is actually one mark. One mark. And the back here is really crude. I don't know if you can make out. Here's a person smoking a pipe, squatting, and then you know, out comes, you know, numeral one. So uh, this person is basically out of necessity, is in the out in the open in a meadowy field, you know, relieving themselves, squatting down, and you know, out comes the money. So kind of you know the face value or the the back value, I should say. Uh, the denomination is kind of depicted as worthless, you know. So, uh, really like this little bird up here, you know, <laughs> kind of curious what's going on. So, just a really cool, clever way to depict misery, you know, just hunger. chaos and uh, desperation. Uh, now there can be a lot of meanings out of these designs. So this is what I could come up with. Um, let me know in the link, I'm sorry, let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Um, is there anything else I missed in what, you know, Wenzel Hablick is trying to convey? through his Nordgels. I'm sure if you're a German speaker, you could kind of read the text and kind of dwell more into um, his thinking in designing these beautiful uh, Nordgels. So moving on, we're gonna stay with Havlik. Um, I have these two gorgeous and somewhat rare uh, Hyperinflation money, also designed by Havlik. So let's take a look. We're gonna start with this one million mark. So now you have jumped from Fennigs or one mark all the way up to one million mark. And uh, these, um, this one is a uniface. There's nothing on the back. This particular one is amazing. Um, lot to see here so up on top you know you just have the the Itziho state uh, 1 million mark serial number uh, the this was issued uh, oh by the way the previous not were issued in 1921 
this is issued two years later. So two years later, the hyperinflation has gone crazy. That's why you have million mark being issued at this time. And uh, this here, there's lots to see here. So let's kind of get you oriented. You have clouds in the background. And breaking through this clouds is this all-seeing eye of providence. Um, but the interesting thing is there's this eye is crying these bloody tears and um, before I show you the bottom let's look at the top this is um, the coat of arms of uh, the city of Itzeho in its former glory with this castle and you know the coat of arms up in the clouds the former glory but now they're you know they're surrounded by dark clouds and um, the all-knowing all-seeing eye I can feel the pain and the, the bloody tears are falling and down below on the bottom here we have these uh, uh, stylized like stick figures of people suffering you know people just laying on the floor hands up looking for any sign of relief a lot of desperation um, and then the tears are falling on them and then if you look at the tears they all this red they basically spell out the denomination the one million with its you know six zeros one and six zeros so the bloody tears um, and then the misery of people while the old glory of uh, Itzeho is lost. So this one here is a really neat, neat design, with a lot of symbolism. Again, let me know what you guys think. Is there any other hidden meaning uh, in this design. Next up, another beauty. Now we have gone up to five million. So this is five million mark. And uh, this one is printed on both sides. Really beautiful art deco style again on the back. Serial number up here. Let's focus on the front because that's where all the action is. Lust to see. A lot of writing on the borders. And basically, the theme here is a burning ship. So you can see a ship in a storm and there's fire on the deck. And all the crew, crew members are trying to steer um, through the raging waves. And then all at the same time, you know, trying not to get burned. And then this very stylized flames, red flames, spell out, you know, the de denomination, you know, five million, five million mark. Um, so this, this, this is to kind of capture the desperation of the ship crew uh, as they are being attacked by waves and fire all at the same time. So they really have nowhere to go. And, uh, but in this, you know, really sad scene, the designer has given us a way out. And that's really, I think that's really clever. You know, they're trying to, you know, give us some hope, uh, a way out of this very dire, desperate situation. And uh, what we have here on each of the four corners is, you know, different types of workers. So, kind of hard to focus here. So we have, you know, shoemakers, um, farm workers, uh, bricklayers, and, uh, a, a weaver so shoemaker 
farmer, farmer, bricklayer, uh, uh, weaver, all these uh, workers are kind of showing that, you know, where there is will, there is also opportunity. So basically the work is the life force. So when you're in this dire monetary situation, you know, by hard work, you can exit this situation. So this is kind of like giving you an exit, a way out of, of the monetary problems. You know, keep working hard and, you know, you will make it through this storm and this raging fire of hyperinflation by keeping your head down and, uh, you know, keep, keep on working. So really deep and, uh, you know, once you put yourself in their situation where you can, you can't feed your family because a, a loaf of bread is worth many millions of mark. Uh, you can just imagine how dire the situation was. So guys, all of these not gelds and hyperinflation money is designed by, you know, Wenzel Hablik. He has a lot of artwork. You can search online to see some of his designs. Um, he's worth looking into. Next, guys, I'm going to show you these two awesome hyperinflation money. These are actually issued by the state of Wolwinkel. And these two can be pricey, especially this one here. So let's take a look. So this one is 50 million mark. This was issued in 1923. You can kind of see in this embossed seal up here. These are, you know, printed on both sides. The, the back is kind of simple. The front is where the cool design is. Uh, on the right here, we have a witch and a poem. So this one is called Witches One Times One. So this is a poem from a tragic play written by a famous uh, German writer uh, by the name of Goethe. So he wrote uh, this two-part play, part one in 1806 and part two in 1831. In part one, um, a protagonist by the name of Faust souls, uh, sells his uh, soul to the devil because he wants more power and love. In the second part, Faust, who has sold, uh, has, you know, sold his soul, gets finally redemption and goes to heaven. And uh, in, I think this poem was from part one, the Faust part one play. And no one really, my understanding of this is that no one really knows what this, this is kind of like a riddle, like a math problem or a math riddle uh, that doesn't add up. Meaning, uh, you know, when I, give you the my translation of what's written out here uh, if you try to solve this riddle by what it literally says you don't arrive at any answer it just doesn't make any sense things don't add up so it's kind of like a mystery what this all means what's the hidden meaning behind this riddle called the witches one times one so let me tell you what really is going on um, so basically, this witch in Nagata's Faust One is standing over a boiling cauldron and reciting this multiplication riddle. And um, I'm going to give you the translation now. You must understand from one uh, make ten and two let go and three the same so you are rich lose the four from five and six 
So says the witch, make seven and eight. So it's complete. Nice is one and 10 is none. That's the witch's one times one. So I really don't know what that means, even though I read it off to you guys. Um, if you are familiar with this, if you know what all this adds up to, what is this all about, let me know. I think um, this is just a tribute to this, you know, well-known German playwright, uh, Gotha, uh, and they put the witches one times one just because it's a cool rhyming math puzzle that no one has solved. And this might uh, just be a nod to the hyperinflation craziness. No one can do the math in, in their head when you have to deal with these large numbers like 50 million. I don't even know how many zeros they're supposed to be. So, you know, maybe this is a little bit of a, a recognition of uh, craziness of the times in 1923 when you're dealing with these huge sums of numbers and no one can do the math in their head and it's all confusion and chaos. All right, next one. This one here is super cool and can, can be kind of pricey. Hard to find in a good condition for a decent price. Mine has a tear here. I was able to grab this for a pretty good price. Pretty lucky to have it. Uh, there's a uh, embossed seal here. So this one, the theme here is the death dance of finance. Death dance of finance. Uh, this is the 500 million mark. The previous one was 50 million. This is 500 million mark. Again, it's uh, issued by, you know, state of Bo Winkle. And here, what we have is a skeleton. Skeleton is basically a representation of the Grim Reaper. And he's carrying, I don't know if you can see it, all these cash. And he's sprinkling it over uh, this desperate public. You know, you got mom, dad, kids, all dancing to the tune of the Grim Reaper, who's who's basically making him making these people do whatever he wants them to do, basically dance to this this game of finance. You know, people are desperate for money, and then you know, the death is kind of making them dance to his tune uh, because they know that uh, even with this money, they can't survive because things are so expensive. And here, you know, this is the title, Death Dance of Finance. So this is really symbolic, really cool. What I love about this banknote is all around the border in this kind of like pinkish, reddish color, if you look closely, you have, you know, one liter milk cost about 152 million, you know, mark. And this kind of goes all around. So I made a list of exactly what is listed here. So it tells you one liter of water was 98,000 mark. One pound of salt is 42 million mark. One egg, just one egg is 75 million marks. One pound of bread is 200, 210 million marks. One liter of milk is 152 million marks. And then what's really morbid is, um, them pointing out uh, the price of death certificate, which is 600 million mark, more than any other item I have told you about, and a coffin, a coffin to bury the dead is 45 billion mark, 45 billion mark. So that's the really sad state of affair is it costs more after someone dies than to feed them. So death dance of finance. Really, really cool, 
cool hyperinflation money. And this one here was the, which is one times one, the math riddle, the multiplication table. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a like and keep collecting. Hello guys, hope this video was fun. Live a life. Take care. Goodbye.